Modern hot hatches are ridiculous. No one bats an eyelid at a 400 brake horsepower Merc or BMW now, but for whatever reason, the cars which follow the original recipe of what a hot hatch used to be back in the day don't really get the praise that they deserve. Probably because they don't have the same silly numbers that the bigger boys have. But let me tell you, you can have just as much fun in the smaller compact cars than you can in the likes of a Stage 19 Golf R. Making these videos in my spare time means I've got to try out quite a lot of them as well, so let me take you through which ones I think are the best hot hatches you can buy for your budget. Grab yourself a cuppa, get sat down, and let's get into it. Right, so I think most people would agree with me if I said you can categorise modern hot hatches into two different tiers, since there's such a mental leap in performance. You've got your regular hot hatch, which is usually a lightweight, manual, front-wheel drive car with anything from 130 to 230 brake horsepower. Then, you've got what I class as hyper hatches. 300 brake up over. Mental performance, usually in a bigger shell as well. M140i's, A45's, RS3's, you know, fucking rocket ships in comparison to the OG hot hatches in a straight line. Thing is though, straight roads are for fast cars, but corners are for fast drivers, and when there's a horsepower limit on a road, the setup and weight of a car makes a massive difference. Hence why manufacturers are still churning out the smaller, more nimble hatchbacks like the Fiesta ST, rather than scrapping them all together and just focusing on the bigger performance hatches that they also make. And they're the ones that I'm going to be talking about today. The three budgets that I'm going to be covering in this video are 10, 20 and 30 thousand pounds. So I know I haven't started yet, but if you want to see a part two with either cheaper or maybe more expensive cars that are more suited to your budget, then let me know down in the comments and sub to the channel so you don't miss it. Right, so let's start off with what's probably going to be the hardest decision to make. What would you buy with 10 grand? It's the budget that you have the most choice with really, and I'd be lying if I said I'd been behind the wheel of every single option that you have to choose from because I haven't. The 208 GTI is a real contender on paper, but I haven't driven one yet, so I can't sit here and say it's the best thing to buy. But here is a list of all the other cars that fit the criteria that I have had the chance to throw about. And straight off the bat, I can whittle it down to my top three. As much as I love the Swifts, I mean, I've had two of them, I've got to drop it. It's about 50 or 60 brake behind the rest of the pack, and to be honest, it doesn't stand out in any other area to make up for the lack of ponies and torque. I know it's not all about power and I'm sounding a little bit hypocritical even mentioning it, but they're just a bit too flat when you push the accelerator coming out of a corner. The Arbath 595 and GTI are the next two to be dropped as well. The Polo is just too bland, it doesn't give you the same feeling that the other hot hatches do. And as for the 595, well, they might have a big cult following, but as a 28 year old man, I just can't see myself driving around in a nail technician's car, and that's coming from someone who used to own a Porsche Boxster. The VXR is the next one on the hit list, and to be fair, I did look at buying one of these. The spec looks half decent, and the interior is arguably the best one of the lot, but there are just a lot of small things that annoy me about them. The visibility out of the rear is shocking for one. The ride is too stiff for everyday road use, and it has the worst MPG out of a lot of them. That leaves me with my top three. The JCW Mini, Clio 200, and the Fiesta ST. Now they all have an argument for you choosing them, to be fair, that's why they're so popular. The Clio is the only one with an NA engine, and in a world where forced induction seems to be the norm now, that counts for quite a lot. They're probably the most rare ones to see on the roads as well, so if you want an exclusivity, especially if you can find a rare one like a Raider for sale, then they're the ones to go for. But I could just never seem to get comfy behind the wheel of one, and that's totally down to me and it's not the car's fault in the slightest. Personally then, with a 10 grand budget, I'd be looking to get either a Fiesta ST or a JCW Mini. Big surprise for you regulars, I know. Now, I do already have a Fiesta, but that's only because I couldn't find a nice spec Mini at the time, and I've always wanted to try one of these out as well. It could have gone either way to be honest, and I'm sure I'll end up with a Mini in the future, but for now, the Fiesta is ticking all of the boxes. Super cheap to run absolutely hilarious to throw around on a b-road and you can pick up a top spec fairly low mileage example within that 10k budget which you might struggle to do with a mini if i had an extra 10 grand to spend up in the budget to 20k then there's not as many options to choose from but there are still a few decent things that might tickle your pickle the audi s1 being one of them 230 horsepower all-wheel drive and a manual box what's not to love it might be Audi's entry-level performance car, but it's seriously impressive, and with 20 grand to spend, you can pick up one with less than 20,000 mile on the clock. As with all Audis, I think the interior is a little bit bland, but the exterior styling is really nice. 
And with it being all wheel drive, it's the one that's guaranteed to get you to work when the snow hits too. Yeah, but maybe that's a bad thing. You can pick up a banging Clio 220 trophy for about 15k and save yourself some money for a decent holiday. But the fact they never put a proper manual gearbox in it is a massive no-no for me in a small hot hatch, so I'm not even going to bother talking about it. The best compact hot hatch you can buy for 20 grand though is the i20N. I shouldn't even give the other cars the time of day, it really is that good. Yeah, at the time of me recording this, I think I've only seen one sell for under 22 grand, so it's a smidge over that 20k budget, but I'm the one making the video, so I make the rules, alright? It's basically like the nerds at Hyundai went to a Fiesta ST focus group, sorted everything that the Ford owners said they wanted to improve on their car, and just slapped a Hyundai badge on the back of it. It's such a nice place to sit. The soundtrack out the back end is phenomenal for a standard exhaust system, and the way this thing handles for a front wheel drive car is next level, it sticks like shit to a shovel. And if it wasn't for the next car, it would have been my car of the year. Unfortunately though, if you crank that budget up to 30k, you're in GR territory. There's literally no other car on this earth that drives like this thing does, maybe apart from actual rally cars. It might be the most expensive compact hot hatch ever made, but to be totally honest with you, I think it's a bargain. It kinda sits in no man's land really when it comes to power figures, it's in that grey area where it's not really making enough horsepower to keep up with any of the hyper hatches in a straight line, but it has more than any of its similar sized competitors. That paired with the all wheel drive setup means it launches away from any of them and can keep pulling away around the wriggly bits too. It really is a special piece of kit this, and if you want to see it in more detail, because there's nothing wrong with watching more content on a GR, I'll stick a link in the top right hand corner for you to watch my full review on it. I've done the same with the i20N as well, thinking about it too, so if you want to know why I rate them so highly in a bit more detail, you might want to go check out those couple of videos. That's it for now though, just another excuse to go out for a blast with the boys on the country lanes I suppose, wasn't it? They all handle brilliantly, but you can tell the more you spend, the more car you're getting. You still need to have a decent set of bollocks to get the full potential out of them though, but like I said at the start, you can have just as much fun in a 10 grand Fiesta than you can in a car that's worth three times as much with double the power. All depends about what you're after at the end of the day, doesn't it? Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you did, comment what you'd buy with whatever budget you have, and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. I'm nearly at 10k now. Not really a numbers guy, but it'd be cool to hit that milestone, I think. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!